Fish on, James. All right. Good work, sir. What color was that? Pink UV. All right. Today on Go Angling, we're on Lake Pepin. I got Pat McSherry in the boat, and we're going to chase down a hot, high water walleye bite. In depth outdoors, Go Angling. Brought to you by Gander Outdoors. Boy, they are right up in the... We're in the rhubarb. Yeah. So is this bottom that's normally here, is this pretty clean? Or is it, this just actually land? This is actually like, it would be like a sandy beach mixed with buckbrush, you know? Okay. Whatever vegetation grows on sand. I've been on Lake Pepin very few times and obviously never when the water is this, this high. I mean, normally you would be able to take your boat and put it up on shore here. You got a walleye, eh? I believe it's a walleye. I'm guessing walleye or you gonna sheepy. Eat that? You gonna eat that? <laughs> I'm not that hungry this morning. <laughs> Pick your teeth with it. Oh, nice fish. There we go. First five minutes, first fish. Well, you know, I don't want to sound like we're all about, you know, keeping tons of fish, but this is one of those bites where you know, some guys will refer to it to a, a meat run. Mm -hmm. This is a bite where if you want to catch, you know, a limit of 18 inches per guy, it's, there's no such thing as a gimme in fishing, but it, this is as close as it gets. Well, I like that because I need a, need a couple fish. So we'll get I got the live ball running for you. All right. Perfect. And the program James has us on are just these shad wrap number fives um, with a bright color right away. And we might fish a little deeper water, right? And yeah. Mix in some smash shads or a little bit deeper running baits, but. You know, right now the fish are up in the brush and the timber. Um, we're just working the edge. Uh, to get up into the flooded timber and try to, you know, pick out a fish, it's just too much work, right. too much effort digging around back there. So we're just gonna be along this edge and the edge just happens to be in seven, eight foot of water. So, you know, that's perfect for number five shad wrap. Right. Later on today, as we move up the shoreline, things will get a little bit deeper, we'll just put on bigger baits. That's a good one. Maybe. Maybe. It's a good eater. 18, 20 inches. And these fish, you know, it's first part of June, first couple days into June. And uh, these fish will already be pretty chunky by lake comparison. They eat pretty good out here. Well, they're pretty chunky to begin with. Yeah. <laughs> they don't fall as far as no. a lake walleye does. No. Oh, come here, fish. This was on a bright, this was on a uh, fire tiger. And when it comes to uh, Catching a bunch of fish for a meal. This deal here on Pepin is about as guaranteed as it gets. Oh, there's one right behind the camera guy. There we go. All right. Real nice June walleye here on Lake Pepin. Really just getting things set up and started. This is a little big by my uh, estimation for a keeper. That's probably a 21, maybe a little bit longer inch fish. We're gonna catch so many 17 to 19 inch fish today, there's no point in killing this one. So, see you later. Well, the program out here, you know, the water's low to mid 60s. And a lot of walleye anglers would be thinking, you need to, you know, slow down. It's early in the season yet. These fish out here on Pepin are wired a little bit differently. Uh, we're gonna be fishing about three to three and a half miles an hour today, pulling these crankbaits in shallow water and it is one of the most efficient ways to fish out here, bar none. We've got real high water right now. Uh, most of the river is really hard to fish. And of course, that's something that's just plaguing anglers all over the Midwest. But Lake Pepin is one of those wide spots in the Mississippi River where you can really get out of the current. And these fish are out here. They want to feed right now. So we're going to give them what they want. Oh, look at that. Hey. It's mad. It's either a walleye or a drum. A bullhead. Feels like a drum. Oh, it is a walleye. There we 
we go. I had just switched colors. You know, we caught a few right away when we got here on some more bright colors. I got one too. Switch to that perch. You got one too? Oh, he just got off. No. That was definitely a walleye. Felt switch. like a decent fish. That's that orange. I that, switched oh, to that, a, a that darker, darker color. So that's two bites on darker colors. So we might be on to something there. That's a solid fish. Yeah. Nice chunky fish. Welcome to the fish fry. That's a number five shad wrap. Coming around the point. That yellow perch that I switched to seems to be a producer right now. That's definitely one thing we've done in the last half an hour is switched a lot of colors on a lot of baits. It seems like you switch and you might find a new pattern or a different color that's producing. Can change even not just day to day, but throughout the day. There we go. Another one for the live well, James. The water's dirty, but they just keep right on eating. Yeah. Pop That's that what off. we need to see, because we've yeah. uh, lost a couple big fish today that yeah, we, I would have uh, liked to have met in person. <laughs> There's been a few that were kind of heartbreakers. Inside rod, Fat. Let me get this one out of the way for you. There. Well, he's up on the surface now. You're going pretty good on that one. Oh what yeah, we, we're, we're smoking right along. And he's up in the trees. You're gonna have to hork him out of there. <laughs> this is brush fishing here. <laughs> <laughs> we got another one on this rod. Oh, we do, nice. Let's see if I can't get started on this. This one feels cheapy. That's a lot of drama for an eater. Yeah. He was just fighting like he was a big one. Well, I was hauling the mail at about three miles an hour. <laughs> If there's a faster, more efficient way to put a meal of walleyes in the boat, oh. I just don't know what it is. I mean, it's just, you're always dealing with a fish. Right. As soon as the water drops another, you know, four feet, it, it really tapers off. What's the water temp that you usually look for for this kind of speed trolling? The magic start for this bite is 63 degrees. For, you know, years when I guided down here, that was always a start, and there is no ceiling. If it stays high, this bite would hold. But as soon as it really starts to drop, and you know, this just turns into just a sand shoreline. Right. And there's no reason for the fish to be here anymore. And I don't know what the reasoning is, why they respond so well to those fast cranks, but you slow down, you catch more white bass and sheephead. You dial it up near three miles an hour or even more, and it's just mostly walleye. Mm -hmm. All right, that's all for us. For everybody watching, uh, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're gonna be putting out two videos like this every week. Would love to have you along on all the adventures. And if you've got some ideas for videos you'd like to see, some topics, species, destinations, make sure you add it to the comments. Would love to hear from everybody that's watching the video. So from Pat McSherry and I, thanks for watching this Go Angling, and we'll see you next time.